All right, picking up where we left off. On this side of the board, this is Vampire's turn three. You'll notice he's moved his skeletons up. The um, it, There's a rule we broke that, that neither one of us were thinking much about, but you can't march skeletons without a vampire nearby. And uh, these skeletons were about an inch from the side of the board, so they've obviously marched up. And during his magic phase, that unit on the left, as you can see in this blurry picture, came in and hit the side of my errant unit. So that was kind of a big deal. Um, I'm, dying. I'm positive he didn't he didn't mean to cheat or anything, but neither one of us were thinking about it. So uh, not a good thing. You don't want to have your knights standing around getting charged. I was thinking they could probably hold this turn. I have that unit of knights of the realm on the lower left who can come in, hit the flank of that skelly unit, and uh, should be able to take care of them. So I'm looking at my BSB unit thinking, you know, what should I do here? I considered maybe going out, turning left, and charging the second unit of skellies, but I didn't think I could break him completely, and his black knights would have just charged me in the flank, and that would have been ugly. So what I ended up doing was just uh, staying where I was. In hindsight, what I should have done is um, is moved and turned, or at least turned, so that I could help out with those skellies if I needed to. So on the other side of the board, still Vampire's turn three, you'll notice his fell bats have charged my Pegasus Knights. As you may remember, I had two units of Pegasus Knights on that hill. The bats charged the, the, the other unit who failed their fear test and fled off the board, and then they came in contact with this unit. You'll notice also that uh, his Grave Guard did away with my Fast Cav. They've moved on up. My General is still off the board. His general has flown behind the woods to the right. So on my turn three, you'll see at the top my general's flown in. I've positioned him so that if his vampire lord stays where he is, I can charge him. If he moves, I can charge this black coach. I can charge the ghouls if I want to. I can charge into the back of the grave guard if they don't move. So that's why I put him there, is just to kind of give me some flexibility and help um, gain control over that side of the board. Notice I brought my skirmishing bowman into the flank of that bat unit. Hopefully I can, I can get those guys polished off. In the left, the uh, you'll notice the battle's still raging over there. I wasn't able to get my Knights of the Realm into the flank of that skeleton unit because they failed their fear test, which was just a big hassle. Now that Knight's Errant unit is still locked in combat and they're about to get charged in the front by that other unit of skeletons which is what happens if you look on the left. The, uh, you can see the Black Knights turned around to face the threat of my general. You can see he moved his general uh, to the hill, and he's positioned his ghouls such that my Grail Knights can't charge his general. I thought that was pretty smart. He, he cast the Wind of Undeath spell, caused a few wounds, and so he had that three-wound unit of Spirit Host pop up anywhere he wants, and he put it right in front of his general so that my general cannot charge him. There's not enough room to fit between them. And if I charge the spirit host, assuming I kill him and overrun, I will not his general. So I thought that was pretty good maneuvering on his part. You notice the grave guard. They uh, turned and charged my peasant bowmen who fled and were overrun. And then the grave guard ran into my Pegasus Knights. They fought, and my Pegasus Knights lost and auto broke. So on this side of the board, when that second unit of skeletons came in, hit the front of those knights errant unit, now they outnumbered me, and when they won combat, I auto-broke. So this is where I was really wishing that I had turned that big unit of knights of the realm so that I could have immediately countercharged. But as it sits, I've got some peasants that can turn and get into the fight. I've got some knights of the realm that can turn and get into the fight hopefully hold everything up so that my BSB unit can turn and so that my Knight's Errant unit can rally. What happened, in truth, was the peasants were able to make their charge using the leadership of the battle standard bearer. The Knights of the Realm, for the second time this game, failed their fear test, which is uh, starting to get a little bit annoying. You can see the Knight's Errant unit did rally, and I positioned them just to help out with, uh, with that battle should they need to. So flipping over to the other side of the board, you can see I decided to go ahead and take my Grail Knights into the Ghouls, just get them out of the way. 
on the far right top you can see I'm bringing my reserve unit of Knights for Errant uh, over to this side of the board as fast as I can to help out and I decided to charge my general into the Black Knights unit just because I do not need those Black Knights uh, going over where, where the skeleton battles raging and I'm, I'm losing confidence that I'm going to be able to charge his general so I decided just to go ahead and charge that unit So on this side of the board, you can see this is before I even had a chance to charge with my BSB unit. That peasant unit just rocked. They uh, did a bunch of wounds with their combat res, took out even more skeletons, and they just did a fantastic job. Of course, that Knights of the Realm unit, the small one, is getting ready to get charged by the skeletons because they failed because I failed my fear test. So we'll have to see how that works out. So what happened was his his skeletons came in the front of that small unit of knights. I failed the fear test for the third time this game with that unit, so I should have been hitting on sixes. But what happened is by the time we actually fought, we both forgot about that, and so I was hitting on threes and above, and I just did a, a massive number of wounds, and with combat res, destroyed the unit completely. So on my turn, I was able to declare a charge on his necromancer, and do so in a way that when I overrun, I will hit a second necromancer. And all that probably shouldn't have happened because a lot of my hits were not on sixes, they were on three, fours, and fives. So uh, I hate that I did that, it was certainly unintentional. Anyway, you can see the other unit, my BSB unit, got the charge, so that unit's going to be demolished in just a second. You can see on the right-hand side, he's got his Grave Guard sitting there. I've got my small unit in Knights Errant at the top coming down for charge. My big unit at the bottom is turned, getting ready for charge. I made a mistake with those bowmen. I should have got them out of the way to clear the way for my knights errant, but I don't know what I was thinking. On the left-hand side, you can see the general's trading wounds with those uh, black knights. He's winning combat by one every time. Um, I'm, I'm immune to psychology with the Grail Vow, and I'm um, passing my break test, so that's what's happening up there. So this is turn six. What, what happened here, I really didn't want those bowmen in the fight, it, had I really thought about it, because it just gives the vampires some easy wounds. But I had to get them in the fight to get them out of the way so my big unit of Knights Errant could reach. And then it turns out that I was 17 inches away instead of 16 inches away, so the big unit couldn't reach anyway. So I just gave the, that unit the opportunity to take, get a bunch of wounds on my bowmen, and uh, yeah, that was a mistake. But after the dice were rolled, the small unit of Knights Errant just really cleaned up. They just did a massive number of wounds, and with combat res, despite the four wounds that the vampire was able to do on my bowman, knocked out even more and ended up being uh, being better than it probably should have been for me. So that was the game. We didn't even add up points. It was pretty obviously a Bretonian victory. Uh, vampires still had their two vampire characters left, but they lost their Vargolf. They lost uh, both Necromancers and this unit's under half strength, and they've lost all their other units. Um, Bretonians, I've lost both units of Pegasus Knights. I've lost my field trebuchet that blew itself up. Uh, a couple peasant units, but all my knights are still on the board, so uh, I have most things left. Overall, yeah, it was a fun game. It was probably sloppy on both of our parts. He was saying that he wished he played his uh, general differently. Yeah. He had the Helm of Commandment and really didn't use it that much. Um, I definitely need to play my breaths differently. I don't need them getting charged. I got charged more than I did the charging, which is just ridiculous with this army. But uh, live and learn. It was a fun game. Hope you enjoyed it.